All right, well, um, I have a PhD in, econo in economics, and um, I suppose that um, econometrics is a special sort of uh, application of statistics to economic problems. So that um, we use statistical methods to analyze economic data. So in that sense, I can be viewed as a, a statistician, but we also um, do some statistics in our own right. Economics data is quite different from the usual sorts of data that might be analysed and in particular because it has a, a time series and persistence in it, a lot of the methods that were originally developed to look at statistics in other contexts are not applicable for economics. And the questions we ask are sometimes different too. We're not just looking for correlations, we're looking for causations as well. The reason why econometrics is distinct from, well, it's distinct from economics because um, a lot of economics just looks at whether the price goes up, people want less of it, that sort of thing. But um, econometricians will actually measure how much less. But we're also different from statisticians because statisticians would look at how much is sold rather than how much people want or how much people have for sale. So um, there, there are differences in the approaches as, as well. Um, sometimes I, I build up some forecasting models. Sometimes I build some models to analyse financial data. Uh, one of my expertise, I suppose, is looking at high frequency trading in, in the stock market where you're getting uh, trades every millisecond. I'm used to working with very big data sets. Some, some of the time I look at macroeconomic analysis or macroeconomic problems as well. All right, well, this is perhaps an interesting story for you. My first degree was a, a Bachelor of Science. I was very good at maths and very good at statistics. When I finished my undergraduate degree, there was a careers fair and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was sure that I didn't want to be an accountant and I was sure that I didn't want to be a teacher. And the only thing I was interested in was um, Australian volunteers abroad. And they're, they're a bit, I don't know if you know about the Peace Corps, but they're, they're people who have skills and they go and work in developing countries on the same salary as you would earn if you were in the developing country. They were looking for statisticians that year. So I thought, okay, this, this could be interesting. And um, so, I, so I went and had an interview and they, they were looking for a statistician to go to the Cook Islands, tiny, tiny little islands in the middle of the Pacific. And they needed a statistician there because they were analysing a, a, a census. And for the first time ever, they had a computer there and they needed somebody to help them um, analyse it. And, and they also needed to do things like um, have it, conduct a few surveys because they wanted to work out uh, the value of the economy at that stage. And a lot of people, basically, they, they worked for their families and didn't get paid. Or they might get a bananas dumped on their front garden and that was payment because you went and dug, did something for them type thing. So it was a partly barter, partly money society. So I um, went to the Cook Islands and I worked in the statistics office there for a couple of years. And because it was a developing country, people from United Nations and um, World Bank and these sorts of places used to come. And they used to come to advise on um, statistics and stuff like that. At one point, one of them said, oh, do you want to come and work in um, ESCAP, which is the Asian version of the United Nations? I was sort of interested, but then I thought, ah, gee, I've only got an undergraduate degree. When, when I finish my two years in Cook Islands, I better go back to Australia and do some more study. I got interested in economics because I needed the statistics for the economics quite a lot. So I went back. To Australia and I started doing a bridging degree between my economics and statistics. My professor said go to San Diego, University of California, San Diego, because they've got really good econometrics there. And so I applied and I got a scholarship so I went. But at that point I was going to be a development economist, I wasn't going to be an econometrician. It turned out that I was good at econometrics and I ended up getting a job teaching econometrics at a university, which was one thing I said I'd never do but um, <laughs> I actually enjoy it. So <laughs> I, my, my initial impression when I was 21 was quite wrong, 
so I've, I've been in universities ever since, teaching and researching and, and that sort of thing. But it wasn't a conscious decision when I was an undergraduate at all. It was, it was just life, I suppose. That's how it happened. Oh, an exciting project that I am working on, two exciting projects. One is on climate econometrics. It's looking at climate change in the context of how can one change fuel types without hurting the economy. So that's one project that we are just starting to work on. And the other project that I've got interested in is a completely different. It's looking at the value of people who perform in, in the arts and uh, music and that sort of work and trying to use indirect methods to figure out how much people are, are prepared to pay, I suppose, to have these things in our, these performances in our community. Because we, we all know that a lot of the budding musicians and people in those industries do that sort of stuff for free or for love rather than for, um, uh, earning their living. So that's something I'm also involved in. At the moment. I suppose I enjoy figuring stuff out and if it's a challenge I, I, I like to think about it and I keep thinking about it till I have figured it out I suppose. I enjoy teaching as well. Not too often, I mean sometimes it, it, it's a, a big time constraint uh, having to do um, a lot of preparation with a small amount of time. And having people ask you how to solve um, problems is also, it's, it's nice. I get emails from um, all sorts of places. I get asked to go and talk about stuff um, quite often and that's exciting. So until uh, uh, recently, I, I go overseas a couple of times a, a year to give talks, present some of the things that I've been working on and to meet other people that uh, have similar interests to me and we um, sometimes work together. One very hard part is when students don't pass, for instance, and they don't understand when they, why, why they haven't passed. I mean, it's not fun failing students by any means, but sort of coming to terms with that, I suppose, is, is hard, both for, obviously for them, but also, also for, um, for the teacher, because I, I care about my students. And, and I suppose sometimes it's hard when people um, uh, criticise the work that you've done, because they do. Most people are um, quite tactful about the way they criticise, but some people are pretty nasty. Um, so so that, that can be hard to deal with too. The work we do, we care about it a lot. And if then somebody says, oh, you're not doing it properly or you're doing it the wrong way or... or uh, look at the damage you're doing or, or these sorts of things that can, that can be quite hard to. You're lucky to have the opportunity to study, so use it wisely. I mean, do, do work. That doesn't mean work 24-7. You, you're at university also to meet other people and to learn to interact with other people. So I don't think as an undergraduate you need to worry too much where your career is going. While you're an undergraduate, you'll find out where your skills lie and, and what you enjoy doing. In a way, it's, it's sort of go with the flow, but take opportunities when they arise. I mean, I got into medicine and I could have done it and I got into law and I could have done it, but um, I didn't really want to do it. Um, and that's really why I didn't go and do honours. That's, that's why I um, went overseas, I suppose. I, I wasn't ready for that. Um, I wanted to work for a while. And, and then when I was ready to do more study, I came back and that wasn't an issue either. And as a teacher now, I, I think slightly more mature students often do better for graduate studies, basically because they've been uh, in a position where they've had to make decisions as part of their work. And so they're beginning to get a bit of self-confidence, but they also know that if they go back to university, then they better not waste their time. And you're investing in yourself when you're studying. It's much harder, I think, to learn once you're trying to work or, or have a family or, or have other things that you need to worry about as well. So.